Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of In the Barn. I'm Robin. And I'm Kelsey. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing the discussion around joint supplements. But this week, we are focusing on one particular supplement you, your horse, and your dog should be avoiding, Summit Joint Performance. All right, welcome back, you guys. This episode is going to be round two of our joint supplements, supplement discussion. I mean, we technically it's like two and a half because we're going to focus on one particular product, which is Summit Joint Performance. That's the injectable uh, supplement, which that's like a bunch of question marks right there. That's an oxymoron. An oxymoron. Like that's not like that's not a thing. Just going to throw it out there. That's not a thing. And this is not a promotional piece. In case you've ever Googled Summit Joint Performance, you will see so many paid like blog posts about this product. This is not a paid sponsor. Like we are not here to tell you anything but the truth on Summit Joint Performance. But Looking online, there are so many, what I can only describe as like fake blog posts that are, they start, like everyone starts with some line about how the person was a skeptic. And if you know me, I don't believe in anything and I need to do my research first. But when I gave my horse summit joint performance, I was sold. And it's just like the same story after the same story after the same story that it it's pretty suspicious. But I mean, if it's a good product, it's a good product, right? Well, then all of them have like this crippled horse that just magically now after years of being crippled in the pasture, unrideable, barely sound, they're going to put them down. And now look at them. Just after two weeks of the dosage, they're back in training better than ever. And I'm like, what? Uh, so many questions on that front. Yeah, so many questions. So for this episode, what we're going to do is I'm kind of going to walk you through like what is Summit and some of the information that I found on their website and just kind of pointing out some of the issues with the information that they have made available. But if you haven't done so already or you are wanting more information specifically about chondroitin, because I'm going to talk about it a little bit, that's the main um, ingredient or the magical ingredient in supplement is chondroitin uh, sulfate. Go and listen to our joint supplement episode. We did that a couple weeks ago. In that episode, we talk exclusively about what is chondroitin sulfate, all the research around it, and we go a lot more in depth than I'm going to go in this episode. So if you want to know more, go and check it out. It is a pretty common ingredient in a lot of oral joint supplements for horses and humans and dogs. So it's not bizarre that that's the ingredient that's in their uh, supplement that makes sense, but I'm just not going to dive too much into the science behind it in this episode. We already did that in another episode. And also uh, rules and regulations and labeling in the supplement industry. We have an episode all on that as well that you should check out because some of those regulations are going to come into play with this product um, and try to even figure out what the heck it is. And on that note, I would also highly encourage you guys when you go and listen to those in our little um, blur beneath the episode, we always link the links that we use. We always cite our sources, where we got the information, where we're pulling it from, who we're pulling it from. We always give those sources and cite them. That way you don't have to take our word for it. In fact, I would encourage you not to. Go and look at the information for yourself and come to your own conclusions, right? Because these are conclusions that we have come to after reading the studies and gone through the information and pulled out what we were listening to, as well as looked at information that people are pulling out and misrepresenting. And so if you feel that that's happening with us or something, go and read the information for yourself. That way you can come to your own conclusion and feel confident in the stance that you're taking on it. Like I highly cannot recommend that enough. As well as attached on this episode, we will link where we're finding our information, where we're getting our stuff from. And unfortunately, I don't think the same can be said for Summit and how they present their information as well as anytime they're asked for resources, they're just like, oh, by and like ghost whoever asked them a question yeah it's definitely an interesting product an interesting business model there's lots and lots of red flags to discuss uh and just just overall like this product does it pass the sniff test this business like everything about it is super sketchy from the jump so like Whether the product is real and has have these miracle results or not, I just can't get behind a company that's this sketchy. 
it, I mean, like what a lot of people have said, it'd be so cool if this was the little magic bullet it presents itself to be. It'd be so freaking neat if it was. I would just rather they be transparent. I'd rather they be up front and the routes they're going about it is too sketchy and shady for me to support. I don't want to totally get into it, but this isn't how chondroitin sulfate works. Like the claims they're making are not possible. It just at the end of the day and like the claims that are coming out of the owner's mouth are just straight up not possible. So to get us started, let's talk about what is Summit. Like what is this product even? Uh, so I went straight to the source, which is their website, and they have a facts and question section. Facts and questions? Frequently asked questions. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you dingbat. I, I was close. Okay, like I got the F. Like let's just give me that, okay? Frequently asked questions. Facts and questions. That's the same acronym. I was spot on. I just got the Yeah, wrong. but that's the equivalent that's the equivalent of saying ATM machine or SAT test. Whatever. They have frequently asked questions on their website. They are no way the only frequently asked questions, but that's okay because I've got questions yeah. that I feel like <laughs> should be included on that list that they definitely have to be frequently asked. But regardless, the first one on there is, what is Summit? So from their website, they say that Summit is simply chondroitin 4-sulfate, C4S, suspended in sterile water. Summit was originally developed to be used in human ocular lens transplant surgeries. The first thing they say, chondroitin 4-sulfate, we actually know that that is the correct form of chondroitin to use for horses. If you go back to our joint supplement episode, we know that they're using a lot of the correct words in their description. Chondroitin uh, sulfate's great for using in horses as it is the most uh, readily available one for building blocks of cartilage. Chondroitin uh, helps to build cartilage. It's what gives cartilage its viscosity and makes it like bouncy. Um, and not viscosity, the viscosity of the synovial fluid it makes the synovial fluid really st- slippery and then it makes the joint and cartilage um, really like flexible. So That's the right ingredient to theoretically be using, whether it works or not, is a different discussion. Using it in human eye transplants makes sense to me because that would be a way to not have the, like, lens, the cornea or whatever, like, not have it dry out, help it be more comfortable. Like, I think that's really was the goal of it in the transplant process. And it was approved for this use a long time ago in humans. So the story goes, and I found this um, in an article, that a client of Heather Farmers, who she is one of the owners of this company, was getting vials of this stuff from her husband's work. So not Heather, her client was getting vials of chondroitin for sulfate from her husband's work her husband was a doctor and so I'm like is this legal can a doctor just like be bringing (laughs) home vials of this like supply from his is it work like that isn't I don't feel like you're just supposed to do that and then she was like great idea let's just inject it into my horse and see see what happens and I want to know like how she made that jump to like just injecting this random fluid into my horse. Maybe she knew about chondroitin at that point. I don't know. But it just seems like really sketchy and like miracle results. And so she told her vet, Heather Farmer, and that's kind of where this idea kicked off. Heather wanted to know more about it. She and her husband are the ones that started her. Dorian is his name, right? Yes, Dorian. Dorian Farmer. I didn't look into them, but that's what you looked into. So I don't know a ton about them, but like that's the story or one of the stories. Because I feel like there's a lot of stories with this product because I found a lot of different like origin stories. But that is like one of them is that she had a client who was getting this stuff from her husband, probably illegally. So Summit goes on to say on their website that it is the purest form of C4S available, which unfortunately that's just not true because... Or maybe it is, but it's also probably not true. We know that the purest form of C, uh, chondroitin sulfate comes from shark and stingray cartilage and their bodies and their fins. And they, the rumor has it, I can't see it confirmed anywhere, but the rumor is it's bovine trachea, which is a fine 
source, but that's not the purest form. So that's okay. Whatever claim you want to make is fine there. Um, unlike other products, it has all the heparins and other potential damaging molecules removed from the single C4S molecule. Some it has an incredibly low molecular weight and its small size allows it to penetrate barriers in the body like joint capsules much easier than other products. So again, from our last episode, we know that we do want the low molecular weight to conjoint it. It is absorbed a lot better. All this is, is how easily it gets absorbed into bloodstream. This does not prove it works or does anything. It's just how much can be bioavailable and how much can be absorbed into the horse's uh, joints. So they're using all the right words. They do say that, like, again, like I mentioned, it's the purest form, but there's no documentation. There's no proof. They are not members of the National Animal Supplement Council which it's not mandatory, but that is the only organization out there that is doing, that does have some sort of regulation and purity standards a lot more than the USDA uh, does as far as regulating supplements. There's also a claim that ARL Biopharma is testing their products. I saw this mentioned in one of the chat rooms. So ARL Biopharma is a real uh, lab in Oklahoma. So they're in Oklahoma and this product is manufactured in Florida. They do absolutely do analysis of products. So you could absolutely send them some at joints and they would run an analysis for you. But if this was occurring, they would be hired by the company. The company would be selecting what batches they were selling them because it'd be all like a private uh, partnership. So they could send them whatever they wanted. And then where would the results be posted? Like who would have access to those results? Like they're operating on behalf of the manufacturer, not on behalf of the public or for an oversight agency. So maybe they do absolutely go through this laboratory to have their stuff analyzed, but they're operating on behalf of the, of the company, not on behalf of the public. So, and I, again, this is just something I see mentioned. I think a lot of this comes from probably their representatives who have been told things that they want to pass on to other representatives or other potential customers. And I think that's where a lot of these rumors kind of come from, that it's being fed to the reps and then they spread it because there's really not any, like this is not available information on their webpage. And if, why would you hide this? This isn't like, you told us what the ingredient is. It's not like you're hiding the recipe. It's not a secret ingredient. So like, why wouldn't you make these, this information public. Yeah, they're very, they're very hush hush with a lot of their information. And when you start asking these kinds of, so a lot of people who have used the product and have said they reached out to them and they've been very forthcoming with information answers and they, you know, answer any question they have. It's those people that start asking these kinds of questions that typically don't get a response. You don't get an answer. You just get referred to the next person up and you just get the runaround and like completely dismissed. Yeah, and that's something that I'll t- I have a little bit of information uh, or just thoughts a little bit later in the episode about some of their other answers to those frequently asked questions about like, if you're contacted by the media, I feel like that response is a little strange. So did I. I put that in my stuff because I was like, okay. what? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a strange response, but like, that's okay. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just a strange response. Okay, so continuing on with the description of what Summit is, they also state that it's an all-natural product, not synthetic, created in a lab, uh, nor polysulfated, which not created in a lab is actually to be expected with most of these joint supplement products. We know that they're using animal byproducts in order to get the ingredients to make them. So lab synthesized products are not as common, but I think are becoming more and more common. There's one thing that I want to point out with this is that Conjointin, if you remember from our joint supplement episode, is expensive. Because it's expensive, it is rarely ever used alone. And in fact, research has demonstrated that chondroitin alone does not produce any results. It is best used in conjunction with glucosamine. So the fact that they're using just chondroitin and that it's expensive and that they quote are affordable. We will get into their pricing as well because their pricing structure makes zero sense. It like their price alone should be a huge red flag to you guys. The pricing alone on their products should be, it does not make any sense. So you mentioned earlier us not wanting to hide information. So I have definitely like wanted to look at the research and I do did find a research study that I'm going to walk you through real quick that shows conjointant injected into horses muscles works. Wonderful results. 
I found the research study, so I do want to share it with you because I did look and look to see if I could find Summit's research. They claim that they have done research. They've claimed that Dr. Heather Farmer has done a clinical studies on her own horses, like horses in her veterinary practice because she is a vet. There's also a rumored study that they partnered with Cornell University and I think Pathogens Lab. As far as we know, that study doesn't exist. I could not find it anywhere. I searched Cornell's page. I searched Google Scholar's page. I even looked up Pathogen Lab, which isn't a real lab. <laughs> At least I couldn't find it if it was a real lab. Uh, pathogen Labs are a real thing where like they study like disease pathogens, which is different than a lab called Pathogen Lab. There's also no research available on their website. And there's these claims that there are two studies that have a sample size of six horses and a sample size of eight. I don't know if one of those is the Cornell study, quote unquote, the Cornell study, but like no one can find those. And the belief is that those Tests have been recently done, those experiments have been done in the last couple years, and that they show favorable results. So if that's the case, why aren't they like, why can't I click on them on your website? Why don't, doesn't your website mention them anywhere? Why doesn't your website mention like that they exist or even have like little summaries about that research? Even Smart Pack, it's not real studies, but they at least have a little sheet to go with it. Right. It's such a weird one, especially that Cornell study that is constantly thrown around and it's just like it's like a freaking unicorn of the studies it's this it's just like this mythical being that no one can really find other than it's referenced in what uh, one article written by an online like horse media source yeah and they talk about it and like they talk about the results that were seen in that study but once again you can't find the study on your own like there's there's nowhere you can actually find it to go and read it and confirm it. Right, and the other thing with these studies is that no one has linked to them. So everyone who's saying there's several blogs and articles that reference a study with six horses, a study with eight horses, a Cornell study, they are not providing the links. Like, so that means if you can't provide the person that's quoting it, then like, it doesn't exist. I should have been able to find it at least as someone's reference, like in their bio bibliography at the end of their article. And no one can find it like not even reps like why wouldn't reps be posting this study why don't they have access to it yeah it's just it's such a weird conundrum but if you know where it is send us the link uh to our gmail it's in the barn pod at gmail.com uh send it if you have it i i'll look at it i'll you know i'll, I'll take anything i said about it not existing back uh provided it's a real study and it, yeah, the actual study not the article yeah i don't the need the actual article. study <laughs> with the numbers the raw data that's what we want to see yeah exactly so one of the questions i did want to get into because i couldn't find any research that they had done i just wanted to know in general does chondroitant has it been looked at as an injectable into a horse's muscles? Is that something that anyone, any product out there has looked into? And for the most part, I found two categories when it comes to this sort of research area. First off is intra-articular injections. This is a well-researched area. This is injections that go straight into the joint. There is some danger to them due to potential infection and infection in the joint is like not a good thing at all. But often these are prescription uh, and they have been found with good results. I'm not gonna go into those studies because that's just not what we have time for today. The other category is intramuscular injections of polysulfated glucosamine glycan, which is Adequan. So Adequan has been studied. Adequan does require a prescription from a vet. It is something that has been tested. It's found uh, favorable results, and it is injected into the muscle of the horse. Uh, I think it can range from like three to six months, these injections, depending on your horse and their horse's needs and, you know, whatever. So those are the two categories. Those have definitely been well-researched, but neither of those is looking exclusively at chondroitin into the muscle. So I did digging, I kept digging and I kept digging and I wanted, I tried because I wanted to find the Cornell study. So I was using like tons of language from their own website, looking up the chondroitin uh, for sulfate, the way they phrase it, looking up a lot of their words to try to find these studies. And I ended up finding a study from 1998 titled The Effects of Oral and Intramuscular Use of Chondroitin Sulfate in Induced Equine Septic Arthritis. And this was 
published in the Journal of Equine Veterinarian Science in 1998. So I was surprised to find this. I was surprised to find the results, but I want to share it with you guys because I don't want you to think we're hiding anything from you. And I also want to point out some red flags because at first glance, the study looks good, but then after you kind of read it a couple of times and sit with it, you realize there's some big issues going on with it. So if this study does start to float around out there and people become a little bit more familiar with it, I want you guys to understand why this study doesn't actually do any favors for Summit. Okay. So it is a product very similar to Summit. The dosing is actually pretty much the same as Summit, and this is a particular product that is being tested. So what they did for this experiment is they took 15 healthy mares, they broke them into three groups of five, and they sliced open their knee joint and gave these healthy mares a really bad dose of arthritis in one knee. No. I know. Why do you guys have to do that? Like, it's so... Uh. Why? Yeah. I hate that, like, that's where the science goes. But, like, it's not necessary. Like, there has to be a better way. This is arthritis is a huge everyone gets arthritis horses dogs people like there's got to be a better way than forcing it on horses early like these horses ranged from like age five to eight or something they weren't old horses they were like in their prime and now they all have arthritis and it's just like it's just stupid I'm mad at it. I'm mad that they keep doing this. But anyways, and I'm sure this is 1998 in Argentina, so I'm sure these horses were well taken care of. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't see what's funny about that. <laughs> All those poor horses. Yeah, no, these poor horses. I'm sure. And then what do you do with it? Now you have a horse that has and that's the thing. Okay, so here's the other thing you have to keep in mind. Even if this product did work and these horses really did show these like magnificent results, do you think these companies or whoever's doing the experiment is going to pay for these horses with arth- with this now experimentally induced arthritis to get this treatment for the rest of their life? Absolutely not. Exactly. Like that's like that's the part that kills me. It's like, yeah, that horse was great for 30 days and then we killed it or whatever they did or then we poked it with a dif- different truck like that's just what's so insane to me anyways anyways so group one had an application of five milliliters of chondroitin sulfate via um, a muscular injection and they got that each horse got it for five days like it was a five-day loading dose so one dose for the first five days and that was it And then group two got oral chondroitin sulfate, and that was a 10 milliliter dose. And then, and they got that every day. And then group three received no treatment. So horses were observed for 30 days after the operation to determine if either product, the injection, or the supplement was working or what benefits it had. Horses were evaluated on day zero prior to uh, their arthritis being induced, and then they were observed on day 2, 9, 16, 23, and 30, which is every seven days starting on day 2. The like ex- tests they did in this experiment, and I actually keep using the word experiment, which is not the word they used. They used the word essay, but like essay with an A, which I looked it up and is not an experiment. It's like an assessment of a condition or like an assessment. It's like an experiment somehow, and maybe it is the same, but there's a definition that made me feel like this was different somehow than an experiment. So I feel like the parameters, it's like got a, maybe it's a little bit looser. It's kind of the interpretation I was getting that like you don't have to have as much structure as you would with like a scientific experiment. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I kind of get that. The parameters in which some of the stuff was happening is a little bit looser. They conduct five assessments on the horses on days 2, 9, 16, 23, and 30. So the first one was articular circumference. So the horse's joint was measured uh, as the starting. And then what they did was, and I'll talk about the results in a second, but instead of like the joint was 14 inches, they did like it was two inches bigger than zero so like they basically start with null which is zero and then they added like the difference so the numbers are kind of odd in that way uh they don't make a ton of sense because they're pretending like the horse didn't start perfect or good the horse started at zero and then any changes for any of these tests were how it was measured so like the horse could have been lame but you would be presuming the horse wasn't lame and you'd only notice lameness if it was more lame than it was originally They did the joint one. They uh, measured the width of the joint. They did a strain test. So they're basically trying to fold up the knee. Can the coronet band, how close can you get it to the cannon bone? Kind of basically the start of a lameness exam. They also did a lameness exam. So you do the fold, you flex the leg, and then you ask the horse to trot off immediately. 
They also did an analysis of the synovial fluid for protein counts at day 0, 15, and 30. And then they did x-rays at day 0 and day 30. So their findings, I'm just going to talk about them briefly, was that, for example, for lameness. So basically what they found was that the group's on the injectable and the group on the oral did fabulous great results recovered immediately the injectable horses fabulous the oral horses almost fabulous and then the control horses just suffered the entire time the differences that were observed was that horses so their degree of lameness for the day zero everyone was zero day two two on the injectable two to six on the oral and two to eight on the control so the control horse being at eight what had the late most lameness By day nine, most horses were between zero and eight on the injectable, so like more lame than they were on day two. I don't really understand their numbers. That's like the other thing. And then they keep referencing these values that don't exist. But basically, if you look at a chart, that's the only part I really understand. The horses on the injectable were sound by day 16. The horses on the oral supplement got better uh, over like up until day 16 and then after day 16 they had a huge drop and were sound by day 30 where the horses in the control group kind of went up and down and were somewhere in the middle like a one and a half lameness the entire time they also did like x-rays they found that um, there was more condensed areas in group three which is probably due to the cartilage fiber not being able to like repair itself and like the reason I'm not explaining this very well guys is because that like they they didn't explain it very well either like they gave me two sentences and so I wish I could explain this better but I can't which is a red flag (laughs) their conclusion is that and this is their words and again I'm pretty sure it's translated so basically what their conclusion their results were is that the obtained results are determinative and evidence that CS therapeutic value in the induced pathology irrespective of the via via the way it's administered although differences are observed in the product behavior that when administered by the different vias both prove to be effective and lead to normalize the articular condition after 30 days of treatment the observed differences might be the basis for the elaboration of a possible therapeutic strategy based on the use of cs chondroitin sulfate by different vias in different moments of articular pathology although in this election it is also important to consider the kind and condition of the pathology being treated Okay. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. It's definitely been translated. So basically what they found is that on day 16, all the horses that were either getting injections or on the oral supplement showed massive amounts of improvement. But I have a bunch of red flags because the only way I can deduce that there was improvement is by this tiny little box that has just some random numbers that actually don't make that much sense when you look at how they said these studies were being conducted. Like measuring the circumference like you actually you're doing it based on the differences but i don't know like what is that there's not enough information for me to understand what's actually happening yet this seems like a really simple really easy to read study there's also no individual horse data for 15 horses it should be easy enough to give me a chart for how horse one through horse 15 did like that should not be it's not going to take up way too much space and when you're only working with groups of five, your average can easily get thrown off with one or two horses. And so it's really hard to know what exactly was going on and how you got those great results when I don't know what each horse was actually going through and what their actual scores were. Again, there's a lot of missing information in this study. Typically, when I look at an experiment, and again, this may be because they're using that word essay instead of experiment, you're going to have information about how those horses were kept, how they were fed, how they were handled. If you're talking about recovery after a surgery, after an injury, whatever you want to equate it to, It's important to know how those horses were kept. Were they in a stall? Did they have access to turnout? How are they being fed? Like all that information is really important to understand how, what other variables are at play with these horses. So there's very little information about that. There's no information about how the examinations were, like the examinations were conducted. Typically, I'm going to see photos. I'm going to see a walkthrough of what muscle, how much it was flexed. Like there's going to be so much more information about how these studies were conducted that was missing. It was very oversimplified, way too oversimplified. Another red flag. Uh, those doses are way too low. 
The horses were getting 0.5 grams in the injection and one gram in the oral supplement. The recommended daily dose is three to four grams of chondroitin sulfate. So we know that chondroitin sulfate is very bioavailable. It, it does get, I think, like 30%, 20 to 30% of whatever you feed the horse does actually make it out of the digestion when you do an injection, it's 100% bioavailable right away, but those are still really low doses if we agree the daily dose is three to four grams. Keep in mind, that is the exact same dose that Summit uses. Day 16 is the day that everyone started to show improvement, which I'm glad it was day 16 and not any sooner, so keep that in, mo- in mind, Summit fans, that this took 16 days to show results. However, it's actually not how chondroitin sulfate works. Typically, and this is from human studies, which I know humans aren't horses, but we also saw this in a couple other studies with horses. It is a drug that has to build up or a compound that has to build up in a system and it takes a while. It has delayed effects. But the cool thing with chondroitin is you can stop taking it and still feel the effects of it. Uh, Even like month or two months after you stop taking it, but it takes about a month to build up in the system. There were no photos included at all. Photos should be pretty easy. It's 1998, you should have access to a camera. As I mentioned, this was a product that they were testing. It's atroglycan, atroglycan, which is still available on the market. It is made by Syntax, which is a lab out of Argentina. Argentina. Argentine, Argent, Argentine, Argentina. 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 There we go. I was getting there. I was going to get there. It is a medicine. So this was a prescription product, not a supplement that was being tested. The lab that produces and sells this product was also the lab employing the scientist. And they made no declaration of conflicting interests, any information about where the funding was coming from. And in fact, I actually found studies with the same product that were conducted by independent universities and researchers that found it had zero effect. And one last thing, I almost missed it. While it was published in a scientific journal, it was not peer reviewed and it was somewhat like Dr. Cook's letters to the editors. So I wasted all your time to tell you about this research study that does show chondroitin as an intermuscular injection that works. The product's still available on the market. You can buy buy it with a prescription. This study doesn't pass the sniff test. So, and it doesn't align with any of the current research into chondroitin sulfate and understanding how it works. But this is totally valid to bring up because people will use this study. They'll take it, they'll twist it, they'll misrepresent it. And then we'll gobble it up because we want to believe those, like we want to believe people are telling us the truth. We want to believe that the information we're being handed is accurate, you know? Absolutely. And that's why I wanted to talk about it because I didn't want anyone to go out there and like find it and then be like, well, they didn't mention it so because it doesn't match with their beliefs and they want us, like they're scamming us. It's like, I'm going to talk about this because I did find it and I don't want to pretend I didn't find it. But like it has some huge red flags to it. I thought at first I read it and I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. And then after I read it again, I was like, oh, I was right. (laughs) Like I was right. (laughs) This actually is really after reading as many of the studies as I've read in the last several months. This one was definitely not an experiment. It was definitely whatever an essay is. And it. Yeah, it didn't. It's not peer reviewed. It it was not accepted by the journal. It was something that like just like those letters to the editor um, that Dr. Cook was doing that you could submit. It could be published, but it's published in like a different section of the journal. Okay, so back to Summit and their pricing, which makes zero sense and is a super red flag. So if you go to the website, you will find Equine Max Loading Doses. That's like the first product that's available. It is $132 and it's four vials, which checks out to $33 each. Each vial is said to contain five milliliter single dose of chondroitin sulfate. So it's 200 milligrams of chondroitin sulfate. So a little bit less actually than that study. Um, chondroitin 4 sulfate suspended in sterile water and it is to be administered intermuscularly in the neck. So you do that every four days for 16 days, and then you can buy your equine max maintenance doses, which is $99, again, $33 each. It's the exact same thing, but it comes in a pack of three. Hmm. Okay. Now, if you have a dog, you can buy, you can do the same process for a dog, 
Same cost, $132 for a pack of four, same loading dose every four days for 16 days, except for their vial, same cost, has only 80 milligrams of chondroitin for sulfate. How does one have 200, the other have 88, and it's this, or 80, and it's the same price? Yeah, that doesn't add up at that all. That doesn't add up at all. Especially if chondroitin sulfate is a more expensive product to be putting into that, there has to be a price difference then between the two if what is in it is actually in it and they are selling it to, for them to be making a profit off of this, they the price difference would have to be applied for this to actually hold the ingredients they're saying it holds exactly and if it doesn't if the price doesn't follow because we know how expensive chondroitin is because it's so hard to get remember that you're taking apart a bovine trachea they're not producing it in the lab do you know how hard it is to source quality bovine trachea robin (laughs) like and to turn it into this product yeah When you look at that product, that's a clear vial. You don't see no chunks of bovine floating around. Like, it is being broken down in a lab, supposedly. How is it the same price for less than half? And then the other one that doesn't make any sense, and again, I copied and pasted this right off their webpage. Like, I'm not making it up. You can buy a concentrated uh, form. They have the concentrated loading doses. And that is a reduced amount of water. It's 100 milligrams of chondroitin for sulfate suspended in sterile water. It is $40 each. How did it go up in price for less chondroitin? But it's concentrated. I don't know. Am I crazy? <laughs> no, you're not. That's so strange that like the, the prices don't reflect the change in ingredients. No, they don't. The prices reflect their title being the concentrated version or the regular version. Yeah. Like, And then dog versus horse, those should not be the same. And so that gets me into my second red flag is dosing protocol. There is no dosing protocol besides for the loading dose, which is every four days for 16 days. And then it's whatever you want. There's no consideration to weight or size of the horse Or the dog, like you can give the same horse, the same injection to a horse that you can give to a hundred pound dog. I'm not okay with that. (laughs) Like that seems really sketch to me. No. There's no information about how it should be stored. And maybe that comes on the shipping. But is this a product that needs to be stored cold? Like is this a product that can sit on your shelf? And I'm seeing people that are saying they give it maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, maybe once a week. But there also seems to be this mindset that the more I use it, the more I need it, which seems strange and not correct. Because again, chondroitin sulfate is supposed to accumulate in the body and you're actually supposed to go the opposite. I mean, think of Adequin. You don't use that every week. And that costs just a little bit more. And so it's not a cost savings. If you guys are looking at Summit as a joint product, you're paying like $33 every week, every two weeks. Like that actually checks out to be about the same as Adequan. Adequan, depending on what your dosing is and where you are, is about $40 to $50 a week. But you're not giving it as frequently. And your vet is giving it. And it is tested. And it's an actual drug. And they have a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into it. Which brings me to my next issue. The injectable issue. The fact that it's an injectable supplement should be raising huge red flags. Oral supplements are barely legal as it is. Like, barely legal. Could be removed from the market any day now. They probably won't because it's a like a bazillion dollar industry. No one's going to mess with it. But there was a point in time when, not that long ago, where Equus Magazine was writing articles about, be careful, your oral supplements will be pulled from the market at any time. For Summit Joints to be an injection, like that just is how unregulated this is. Injections are considered drugs and those are regulated by the USDA and they have a very stringent protocol that needs to be followed. They have, you know, certain labs that need to be used. They have to be proven to not be worthless, contaminated, dangerous, or harmful. They have federal laws that prohibits like the shipping of anything that is out of compliance. And they have the USDA for drugs, veterinary and drugs, has a a whole reporting um, adverse event process, which 
Summit Joint doesn't have. I did see it mentioned that you could call their lab, but there's no contact information that I could find. I haven't purchased it, so I don't know if I get like a whole kit of information, but I don't want to purchase a product and like cross my fingers and hope information shows up. Um, like I would really like information to be available on the web page. And no, I don't want that information from a rep. I want it like, you know, publicized. But products like Adequan, there is a whole adverse event tracking reports the government is tracking it and while they may not be doing a ton because like we know about dewormer issues that they're not really acting on or requiring better labels there isn't that same protocol for oral supplements you really have to make a huge stink to even get uh the usda to look into oral supplements where drugs they are already set up for it to be an easy thing. Like you could go to their website. It's an online forum you can fill out. There's compliance information on the boxes. Like there's a lot. It's a little bit easier. And a lot of the stuff has already been proven in a lab to be pure, safe, potent, and um, not going to cause harm. It's actually going to do what it's proven to do or said to do. It meets its claims. So none of that applies to Summit because they are a joint sub or they're a supplement company and i know we've talked about this in previous issues in the previous episodes you know oral supplements are a wild west like you shouldn't feel any better about giving a horse an oral supplement like we are not pro supplement here <laughs> um so like don't get that twisted we're not promoting oral supplements we're promoting like zero supplements uh healthy just get like a really good grain balance ra- ration balancer good hay that kind of stuff they do have on their webpage. um one of the frequently asked questions is, are there negative side effects? The only one they mention is uh, injection site reaction, and that happens one in 10,000 horses. But that's like not a summit related statistic. That's just like how often an injection site gets infected or there's a bad reaction to an injection. Like that's just like a random like number they pulled out. That's not anything to do with summit. I just think it's super weird that there is like no information about any negative side effects. Again, like I looked all over the web and no one's posted anything bad. I saw one person say her horse got an infection and it reacted like immediately to the injection. But unfortunately, like I've given antibiotics and my like your horse swells up after antibiotics. So like, is that the antibiotic or the injection? Like, I I don't know. So before I hand it over to you, I wanted to share this story, one of the stories I found. This is a product review on Pure Dog Talk, a podcast. I don't know if you saw their article. No, I didn't. They did Summit Joint Performance Brings Fast Results. This is an October 2020 article. And again, a lot of the information you're going to find out there is paid information. And it's not very clear that they're paying people for this stuff, but they absolutely are. Whether it's a rep or a blogger, a lot of those are paid articles you're seeing. Um, So this is... Dorian's story or one of his stories and he is the founder of Summit Joints who you'll be talking about in a second. So Farmer's story of testing Summit on his personal guinea pig animals is inspiring. We injected Ultra, which is his dog, on a Wednesday evening. At that point in time, she couldn't get up off the ground. By Thursday morning, when we woke up, she was standing in our bedroom, wagging her tail, looking at me. She had got up off the ground by herself into the bedroom and was waking us up. She could walk around the house. She could sit down. She could lay down. She could get back up. That was within 12 hours. By the following day, she was trotting around the house and actually playing with me. A couple days later, I got a video of it. Ultra was chasing the golf cart at a dead run from the back pasture to the front pasture. It's about 900 yards from one to the other. She lived for another year pain-free because of it. That truly was the point where I knew we had something that was incredible. She had been on all the pain relievers and on all the arthritic medication and everything else, and nothing was touching it. One shot of this new product, and it saved her life. I mean, we were going to euthanize her. Just go and listen to our supplement episode. (laughs) Not how chondroitin works. It does not work in 12 hours. Painkillers work that fast. But you're meaning to tell me that her joints regrew healthy cartilage in 12 hours? That's not possible. That is a ridiculous claim to make because that is what supplements are claiming, that they are helping to regrow healthy cartilage and to reduce the um, rate at which it's deteriorating. That doesn't happen in 12 hours. You know what does work in 12 hours? Painkillers. Really good painkillers. 
And I like, I don't know, this story isn't true. Like, it's not true. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. But the biggest problem with that story is that that is not the only one out there like that. They have rows and rows of testimonials. You can't see me, but I'm putting air quotes around their testimonials that are these incredible recovery stories of a horse being crippled, an animal being crippled with like a serious either injury or arthritis and they use summit they use this injection and miraculously within like 72 hours their animal is better and that's not how that works there is no way that this has just suddenly cured your animal i'm not disagreeing it could totally hide that pain but that means now you're asking an animal that is just hiding the pain to go and do an activity that they couldn't previously do like you haven't fix the issue right you're just masking it and now making it worse and causing further damage to that animal by not by allowing them to compete when or do things when they're not at their best like the way to reduce arthritis and complications of arthritis is a well-fed horse that is balanced (laughs) like not hobbling not favoring one leg or the other that is moving and using both sides of their body well And we're not the only ones calling into question their testimonials and endorsements. In fact, Summit Joint Performance is in question by the Better Business Bureau for a few things. As of July 2020, they were currently being reviewed for ads that they were posting that are either misleading or being deceptive, which if you go and read what they're saying and what they're sharing about their product is very true and accurate as well as they're questioning some of the testimonials and endorsements they've been receiving for either being just completely wrong or that they're paying for like false testimonies, testimonials. And Mm -hmm. like there's a handful out there that might be true, but a large number of these that are claiming out their results are not true. They're like, it's not real. The testimonials they're sharing, a lot of them are not real. I mean, here's the thing. Go and look at any joint supplement on SmartPak. Read the reviews. Yes, there's going to be tons of great, positive, glowing reviews, but there's also going to be a balance of negative reviews. Go on Amazon and look at any product. No matter how much you loved that product when you purchased it, there's always a balance of negative and positive. That is the world we live in. There will always be both. When there is not both, there's an issue. And they don't have both, which is the weird thing. Because I've seen in a few different discussions and forums where people have mentioned that they used it or like they did have a human version come out a little while ago. And people were like, I'll just test it on myself before I ever give it to my animal because I'm more willing to do that. And some saw negative reactions in their own bodies and stuff. But you never like, I don't know where these go because they're only available on forums. There's no place linking them to some like on Summit's website on any of their stuff their Facebook things no one is sharing these no one is mentioning it it's just all positive outlandish stories of how this horse came back from the brink of death or how someone's rodeo horse has been crippled for six years and suddenly now they're back in training and running better runs than ever and I'm like huh hold up I have questions (laughs) so before I fully hand it over to you the last part of that uh article that interview so on the podcast this is Dorian continuing on So we all take glucosamine conjointin sulfates that we get in the grocery store, Farmer noted. They say in six months, you should start to see some results. I don't do anything for six days if I don't see results. I am very instant gratification, transactional kind of guy. I'm going to do this. I expect to see results. That was what we saw with this. I didn't have to wait six weeks or a month or two weeks. We saw results the next day. Not how supplements work. Not how anything works, no. guys. No such thing as instant grat- gratification. No such thing as results the next day. That'd be cool, but it doesn't work that way. Nothing works that way. And that's the owner making that claim. Yeah, such a such a strange one. I don't know if I necessarily like the owner of that company wanting like instant gratification and instant results. It definitely shows the mentality that goes into the product as well as their business model. Exactly. So with that, that is the information I have on the product. The next part of this episode is talking about the business itself and all the issues with how it's structured and who's in charge. So Summit Joint Performance, starting off, you know, there's a handful of, I guess, like councils, committees that businesses can volunteer to be a part of. So we talked before about in our joint supplement episodes, the NASC, which is the National Animal Supplement Council. 
and they you uh, company will apply to be able to have their seal and they have to go through a few different steps to be able to put that seal on their products that ensures that there is some sort of regulations overseeing their product and that they are actually having the ingredients listed on their ingredients list are in that product and they are in there for that amount that they're saying it is. That's, you know, a very common thing for large development companies to be a part of. Summit Joint, however, is not a part of that. They have not opted into that, so they are not being monitored by them, as well as with the Better Business Bureau, companies can also nominate themselves and like opt into that, which is not necessarily a problem for those companies that don't. It's just something to be aware of. And once again, that's another thing that Summit Joint Performance has opted out of and is not necessarily a part of. They're just kind of out there operating on their own in no man's land. And I think it's because, honestly, they're trying to stay a little bit under the radar as well as they don't fit into any of these categories, right? They're selling themselves as a supplement, an injectable supplement, which there is no thing under FDA guidelines for it to be injected into the animal. It's now a drug. So you have to undergo the drug testing and those guidelines, but they don't want to do that. So they're going to remain as a supplement but they're not a supplement because they're a drug. Does that make sense? Yes. And something to point out, so I have two thoughts that came to me, is yes, the rebuttal you're often going to hear is that becoming a drug takes a lot of time, a lot of money, like there's a whole bureaucracy around it. That's absolutely true. The thing is, if this product worked as well as they said it did, there would be companies lining up to help them get qualified. If this worked and was as magical and affordable as they said it was, you would have human and animal companies lining up to get it certified as a drug so that it could be widely sold and used instead of the structure it's in now. Also, I don't know if you saw this, totally unrelated to what we just mentioned, but a little bit, their business license. So The BBB says they got their business license in 2020, but their LinkedIn says they got it in 2016. And I couldn't find their business license in any of the usual places I look. Usually I can look up a company and find when they were found, like when the LLC was created. And I couldn't find that anywhere. And I didn't like go to the city or the county and request it because that's another place you could do it or the state. But I thought it was really weird. I couldn't find it either. Also, their name, they put the little R, the little uh, trademark symbol next to their name. It's not. Summit (laughs) is not trademarked. (laughs) Like They put that symbol, but it's not. Cool, 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 cool. It's just one of those things that, it's just one more thing that either shows that they're not being fully honest, which like, it's their name, it's their business license. Why, why can't we find this? It's just like, even if they do have it, which I'm, they, I'm sure they have it, right? Even I'm though we can't sure. find it, they have to have it. There's no oh, way they're it. They are currently hiring for two warehouse people, and I feel like they should probably have it <laughs> if they're hiring and have, like, ads out on Indeed. That It's just, like, one more layer that they put in front of people that hide themselves, that make them not transparent. What's the opposite of transparent? It makes them cloudy. So you can't, like, see what's going on. Yeah, they're doing themselves no favors. Like... They know that there is a huge, not huge, they know that there's backlash against this product. There's no, they know there's some very vocal voices. It would be so easy to show the research. It would be so easy to make some of this stuff very findable. Right. And to shut up the couple voices that have spoken out about this product. Right. It would be so easy if what they have and what they claim is true. It, it's as simple as that to shut us down, shut us up, right? Just show us what you have. And that's all most of these people want is they just want to know, like, what's in it, right? Because while they say this is what's in it, no one's monitoring them. They can be, they're telling us that that's in it, but we can't guarantee that unless we are taking individual samples that we're regularly getting and testing them to ensure that what they're advertising is true. But when you ask them what it really is, they can't answer you. Yeah, it's super, it's super weird. I mean, it doesn't act like what I know about chondroitin. But then if it's not, what is it? Is it? Like, it? people are saying there's results, so it's got to be It's got to be something. I mean, like, it's got to be conjoint, right? Like, it just can't be – I'd make There has no to sense. be conjoint in it, but there has to be more than just the sterile water. 
as well with it. <laughs> That's a good point. I was thinking there was only like one or the other, but you're right. There probably could absolutely be both. Yeah, I'm guessing it's, there's a, a, like probably five ingredients in it, right? You have the conjoint and you have the sterile water, which probably sterile water makes up the majority of it. And then you have some probably painkiller-esque other option in there as well as like another thing. And yeah, that's what I'm guessing is in it. But I have no idea. I haven't bought it and I haven't tested it out myself. Anyways, though, back to kind of Summit themselves and the faces behind the brand. So as far as business management goes, I think it's kind of important to know who's at the top. Because if you actually look at Summit Joint Performance, it's an MLM, which an MLM is a multi-level marketing company. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but this is your typical Mary Kay. Lula Rowe. Yeah. Y- yes. The, so the girls are like, hey, so I have a great business opportunity. You want to be your own boss or like help sell this product. That's kind of how they operate. They have their sales reps. They have their middle people. They have their like slightly higher up people. And then they have their people at the very top that are making all the bank. But it's a multi-level marketing company. And don't get me wrong. They can be run correctly. I don't know if I've seen it done. But I'm sure there's no, good- there no, no, actually, no, you need to. A- okay, so I know a lot about MLMs because I do watch Illuminati, um, her YouTube channel and MLMs at like, there is no such thing as a good MLM. Oh, okay. If you are, it's a pyramid scheme. So basically the only way you make money is by recruiting more rep- reps and you get or what consultants or trainers or whatever they are and you have to get more and more so that they pay you and you get their money. So it's like a, it's a pyramid scheme. Well, I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but. No, 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 you can't. You can't. They're a horrible, they're a scam. Anyone who falls for it, I'm so, so sorry. Like it is, it's a scam. It's a thousand percent a scam. There is no good ones. There's just ones that haven't really been investigated yet because it is an illegal form of marketing. You actually have to do direct sales, which Summit looks like they do but they don't they are a straight up mlm because i did try to buy it and i can't i mean i can but i can't because i'm not giving whatever rep i you, you like you have to go through a rep you can't just buy it on their website even though it looks like you can you can't yeah which if you go back to that one um like kind of their starting up story which ironically is not on their website it's very interesting you go and read mm-hmm. on their website about them how they got started it's it's very vague and doesn't share any of their names, who's involved. Like, you can't find the owner, actually, on their website. You have to go outside of them to figure out who owns it. But their original startup story of how they got started was, you know, a client of Heather Farmer, who is the co-owner and a veterinarian. She's kind of the face veterinarian for the brand. A client of hers was using the product, the secret ingredient, was having great results, and then she started using it and then started telling other people about them in the area using it. And so they were to mouth started using it and then top riders were starting to ask if they could get a hold of it and use it. And that's kind of how they sell their multi-level marketing is like, well, we were just having such great success from word of mouth. We decided to just keep it going that way. And that's the platform we started our business off of. No, you started a multi-level marketing. Like you started an MLM for a reason. It wasn't that. Correct. Because the thing that with MLMs is you don't get rich off of selling the product. You get rich off of getting more and more representatives and more and more consultants and they pay you. So it's a, the belief is that as a rep, you can go and make so much money. I'm going to make thousands of dollars because I'm selling Summit. But the truth is you have to buy product to sell to them to get the discounts. Like there's a bunch of tricks to get you to buy more product and it's their reps actually become the customers. And while Summit is newer and so they're not maybe quite the same format as a Mary Kay or a LuLaRoe, it's the same process. It's the same thing. Exactly. I guess to kind of get into it, you know, as far as business management goes, you have Dorian Farmer, who is the main like head owner of it, as well as the co-owner, his wife, Heather Farmer. And then you have executive assistant Jenna Lucas. Uh, sh- don't don't hurt yourself, kid. Also, I just side googled Florida state business licenses and couldn't find anything under their name or Dorian's name, so it could be under someone else's name and not under Summit Joint Performance. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I did go straight to Florida's uh, state page. Couldn't find it. As far as Dorian Farmer is concerned, I know his past gets brought up a lot, and people get very uncomfortable about it. And a lot of people get very frustrated that you bring up someone's past like this because I'm not going to describe that. People can definitely change. But I do think talking about it over his first conviction was in the 90s. 
all the way up until September 2007, I do think that does show a like a pattern. I think that shows a history of behavior. Yeah. Which is very telling. And people can change. But as far as the businesses he was still starting up in that time, they kind of were similar to the Summit joint performance as well. And it just doesn't entirely show a change in mentality. So that is why I'm talking about it. But that's not the main focus of this, obviously. This is just giving you more information about the people behind the brand. And so as far as Dorian Farmer is concerned, he is a convicted felon. And I know people get upset about that, right? There's a lot of different kinds of ways you can become a convicted felon. You can also be a violent felon, a nonviolent felon. Like there's a bunch of different things involved there, right? Convicted felon doesn't mean someone's necessarily a bad person. It just means they've made a mistake. Um, in the 90s, most of the 90s, the arrests he was uh, receiving was when he was living in North Carolina, as well as he received some in Georgia. And he was convicted of several forgeries and cheat of property services, so obtaining services through fraud. In Georgia, he was convicted of eight counts of second degree forgery. And that was all in the 90s. There was like a bunch of different times he was arrested, quite a few times. Wait, forging what? Like art? I don't know. I couldn't like, sorry, I don't know what he was forging. Probably like checks and stuff. Yeah, so I think it was um, checks and certificates because that does come up again later. In March 2002, he was charged with traffic and stolen property and grand grand theft motor vehicle and a few days later was charged with using counterfeit payment and was convicted of burglary in North Carolina at the same time um, in August 2002 so same year was convicted of theft by taking motor motor vehicle so while he was charged back in March he was convicted in August and then in January 2006 in South Carolina he pled guilty to a third degree burglary altering forging or counterfeiting certificates obtaining signatures or a proposal under false pretenses and receiving stolen goods and then in September 2007 was arrested for his first offense of driving under the influence and at some point he was also arrested and char uh, charged for aggravated assault on a pregnant woman However, Yikes. I, previous people have gotten cease and desist letters when they brought this one up. He was not convicted. The charges were dropped. I just mention it because I think it's worth having out there. I know he was not charged. Please, for the love of God, do not send me a cease and desist order. But he was arrested for that. What, she ran into a door or something? I don't know. Okay, so maybe you're getting to it and I'm just like jumping ahead. But did he have like a coming to Jesus moment where he was like, oh my gosh, my past was so horrible and I have now, you know, found the Lord and Savior and now I'm going to go about, you know... The good path you know like you know what i'm saying like you either if you have that kind of background you either have a come to jesus moment you turn your whole life around and you become the hero or you're you never change and you're still doing the same shit and you just haven't got caught yet i did not see a come to jesus moment maybe i missed it i didn't go super far back into his facebook i probably should have so i can give you guys more information i mean if it, it so i don't know if he had that moment it, if it happened it would have been in an article right he would have been like i had this horrible background you know but i like look what i made of myself and look where i am now and i turned it all around and i feel like that would have been addressed and brought up on their website with the about us right i feel like that would have been a really great chance to show transparency and build that credibility with your audience that like you disclose this information now it can't be used against you yeah sure if that happened i was gonna say like i don't feel like that was the vibe i got from their website was like <laughs> giving off information like yeah no they the website's very hush hush about what is happening he also has started numerous companies and like the list is long he actually started another equine joint company registered as equine joint performance that he filed for 2017, but that has now since become inactive as of 2018. And there's actually quite a few other businesses, LLCs that he started up prior to Summit Joint, which isn't a problem. I just think it's, you know, another piece of information to be aware of. He started an ultimate, ultimate fitness training, uh, Central Florida Equine Orthopedics LLC, Central Florida Hay Exchange Incorporated, Superior Equine Veterinary Services. There's also like a few others that okay. didn't pertain to horses, so I didn't bring them up. But he started a few other businesses out there. So he sat, okay, so like I'm starting, I've seen enough movies and enough TV shows. I'm starting to like picture like an Italian wise guy. Like he's got, and I'm just, I've never met this man. Like, you know, you guys know what I'm describing. Like you're starting to no, picture he's some someone. some white bald dude from Florida with glasses. Which is, but like you, he's like that scammer schemer who's always got a dream, always got an angle. Like, why did this one work? What was different? Like, honestly, 
at this point, like I've convinced myself it's probably just meth. Like that is what you are injecting your horses with. <laughs> and that's why you're seeing great results. <laughs> like <laughs> I know it's not, but I just like I'm afraid that that's like what we're going to find out. At some point, someone's going to like crack open a bottle and they're like, no, actually, this is just meth. I saw a really funny comment that someone was like, this is an all natural product. Like how can it be harmful to animals? How can it be harmful to us? And someone was like, cyanide is also an all natural product. Yeah. And I was like, that's a that's a fair point. I don't know if we can use all natural necessarily as the stepping stone we think it is. And that goes for many products out there, not just this one. And again, they are using really low dosing levels. So like theoretically, if it is conjoint, it's it's fine at that low of dosing levels because it's not going to do anything. But he is, Dorian Farmer is married to an equine vet based in Florida, Heather Farmer, and she is the vet associated with Summit. And I think this is honestly a really big turning point for the company themselves. And I can't help but believe and think that this is part of why so many are willing to validate the company and they see legitimacy in it is because we generally trust vets. So if a vet is starting it and is the face of it, why wouldn't we want to believe in them? Why wouldn't we want to believe them? I do not trust vets. So sorry. <laughs> like, no, I do trust vets, but there are so many out there that you can't trust either. Like, I know. Now you have to take everything with a grain of salt and do your own research, which sucks because most of us, I like, I don't want to have to do with my own research on everything. I want someone else to put it in a nice, pretty package with a bow on top and hand it to me when I can digest it easily. And not have to like dig through everything. And we talked about this in another episode, like our first supplement episode, is that we want to trust vets because they are, they went to school way longer than I did. They got way more educated on these topics. They still go continuing education. Like I want to trust my vet, but they're not obligated to act in your best interest. Like that's not part of their, like they don't have to do that. And I mean, not like they're trying to like sabotage you, but they don't have to know every little detail about the product they're recommending to you and we see this a lot with like smaller animal vets so they get a lot of free merchandise and or a lot of promotions and so they recommend like a lot of things a lot of foods dog foods that are like are not actually healthy for your dog did you notice on heather's her dmv her doctor D- dvm website i'm getting the words i'm getting them there she does not associate with summit at all i saw that i was going to mention that because i thought that was so weird so heather farmer she graduated if you go to her um Website, you'll see her little bio on the About Us page. She graduated from Ross University of Veterinary Medicine in 2006. And in her veterinary practice, they primarily focus on lameness and performance horses, which is interesting because that kind of lines up with Summit itself. Sure. However, if you go to like the products page of there on like their homepage, Summit's not on there. In fact, Costaquine's on there, which I thought was interesting because I thought that would be that's their rival, that's an opponent in a similar like yeah that's it's just yeah i thought that was weird yeah i thought that was weird too and that she has like there's some other like there's a salve as well that she makes or whatever that like she's selling her own product that she like hand makes to her clients but not like the product she manufactures with her in a company that she owns with her husband which like when i originally found her uh dv i keep wanting to say dmv and i'm like i know me too (laughs) it's not the department of motor vehicle but when you go to her dvm page I originally, when I didn't see her association with Summit, I was like, oh, I must have the wrong one. There must be another Heather Farmer operating out of Florida. Yeah. So I like, I had to double check and go through like her Facebook page and see the picture there as well. Like confirm. It was a whole. Her photo. I, I, yeah, I confirmed it because it's her in the about us photo. She, she used to be heavily involved. I don't know if she still is, but she was the treasurer of the Belgian warm blood breeding program, as well as she was on the stallion committee of the Belgian warm blood program. I don't know if she still on there that was back in 2012 2013 when she was a part of that though she still is very clearly heavily involved in breeding and different breeding programs um if you go and dig into her past she does have one lawsuit there but i don't think it's super relevant to summit it happened in march 2012 was when it came to court but it occurred back in 2009 where she violated a non-compete clause which was during the term of this agreement and for a period of two years after termination thereof, employees shall not own, manage, operate, control, be employed by, assist, participate in, or have any material interest in any business or professional engaged in general equine veterinary practice located within 30 miles of 19801 County Road 561 Claremont, Florida. However, it turned out that she had opened her own office outside the 30 miles radius 
but was attending to and had clients within that 30 miles radius and was going and giving them veterinary procedures and like still conducting yeah. business within that 30 miles. I feel like that is one of those like gray area ones where like legally it's interesting, but like at the end of the day, it's not. And it, at the end of the day, to me, it makes sense if she was previously practicing at a veterinary practice within that 30 miles, you know, and then she probably had her connections and those relationships built with people within that 30 miles. And so even when she moved her business practice outside of it, she might still have loyal clientele within that. So like, Right. And I think that's exactly what happened. She should have asked them to drive their horses to her place. I think that would have gotten her out of it had they drove to her drove to her clinic she should have been set up to handle that but like whatever that i don't know i i don't think it's very pertinent to the summit joint it's page. not think- a long criminal history by any means <laughs> uh forgery counterfeit and burglary yeah. and stuff yeah exactly it's exactly. not the same on any front leaves a little bit different taste in your mouth after you read the the legal documents i also was going to touch on a few of their senior representatives uh not necessarily by name as it's not necessarily important. However, they have been known, their senior representatives, as well as like many of their representatives, come off very aggressive whenever people question them and they will hand out false information like candy to little kids. So there's been several different instances on various Facebook pages where their representatives will come in and state something as fact. One of the most prominent ones is they'll be saying the product is safe and tested for pregnant mares. However, that's not you can't you can't say that's true because they have never shown the research behind that nor have they been able to support what they're claiming i also think their website specifically says not something about pregnant mares like not giving it to pregnant mares and so their state representatives are contradicting that point and i saw that on a couple different senior representatives that were doing that and i was like oh that's very interesting because that's a big deal for a lot of people who are out there breeding their horses. If you're going to be using a product like this, it needs to be safe for those pregnant mares. And to be saying that it is, presenting that as fact, and you're the representative, people are going to believe you. And so like anytime they're asked or people, you know, they ask for that proof. Can you just show me the study where you gain this information from? They either don't answer or they immediately will just refer them to someone higher up in the company. So like that is also um, just being like a yes ma'am is part of that multi-level marketing, like that selling strategy is a lot of those sales reps are taught to like, will it help with this or is it safe for that? And they'll be like, yes, oh my gosh, yes, it totally works for that. It's totally great for this. Or, yeah, it's totally safe, even though there's like no evidence. All they are told to say is yes you can buy it because that's all they're doing is they're pushing sales on you regardless of how safe the product is is they don't get money unless you buy the product and now you have reps that are dependent on you to buy the product from them for them to get paid like that's the issue with mlm it's not a salaried position and with you know makeup products or something of that nature that might be able to fly a little bit more underneath the radar but with something you're injecting directly into whether it's your muscles, your horse's muscle, your dog muscles, that's a problem all on its own. That yes man theory, that yes man answer becomes very harmful. Even if it is having positive results in the beginning, we don't know what the long-term effects are. We can't guarantee that. And like, if it does have positive results, I'm all for it. Just show me where. Anyways, I digress. Most of you are probably a little bit curious about the sales reps, right? Because you think of the Mary Kay stuff, all those high school girls that reach out to you and like, hey, I have a great business opportunity for you. You know how to become a sales rep for that. But how do you become a sales rep for Summit Joint? You might be asking yourself and I have an answer for you. Do tell me more. Oh, oh, I'll tell you more. So first off, you must be at least 18 years of age. Check. Okay. Nailed it. Reside in the United States. Check. Provide Summit joint performance with his slash her valid social security or federal tax ID number. I'm assuming I mean, like, technically, that's how you get any job. I have to do that. So, okay. <laughs> um, you have to purchase the Summit starter kit, which, ironically, this is optional in a few states. I don't... Because I think that has to do with LMLM. It's an MLM thing, I'm trying to stop... Pr- protect people. It's trying to protect the... Uh, reps from being scammed well then if you live in north dakota massachusetts wyoming any any of those three states then you don't necessarily have to buy the summit starter kit and you have to submit a properly completed representative application and agreement to summit joint performance online okay i can like do all of that i can do that 
I'm going to be so qualified to sell this product. Which is a problem because I don't think either of us is qualified enough to sell this. I wouldn't trust me to sell this to you. So the fact that we could become sales reps should worry everyone that like that's how easy it is. Yeah. And I think you get a discount. I think there's a discount you'll you'll get. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And in addition to this, if you ask the sales reps serious questions, because you're going to be dealing with sales reps directly if you're going to be buying this product. And so these are the ones you're going to ask questions to, right? If you have a question, where is this product being manufactured? How is it being done? Like what entirely is in it? Any of those questions, you're going to be asking your sales reps. And the interesting thing is they either won't answer you or you'll be rerouted to Dr. Farmer, which is strange because that's the owner of the company. I don't feel like they have time to answer mm, little old me's questions. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Their reps should be able to answer some pretty basic questions and have some pretty handy dandy pamphlets at the very least. But there's no like training. I don't have to sit still for like a 30 minute like YouTube video or anything. Um, I didn't see any of that. I'm sure it's probably there once you submit your application. They're like, hey, here you go. I'm sure there's that. But As far as on their website goes, that's all that's needed for you to become a sales rep. Like one more little added thing that's kind of unique in how they handle things that raises a red flag is that all inquiries by any type of media, which that would extend out to those of us that are interested in buying this if we reach out on social media and we ask questions, all inquiries of any type of media must be immediately referred to compliance at summitjp.com. This policy is to ensure that consistent and accurate information is provided to the public. Failure to submit inquiries to compliance may result in suspension and or termination. But it's essentially saying that your sales reps aren't going to answer questions. They're, they're not given answers to answer your questions with. You are going to be rerouted up top and then they're going to just ghost you because they don't have time for dozens of questions. Right, which I like, obviously there's a certain level of... Like, I work, I have a job. Like, (laughs) I'm not going to answer every single question. Like, if the newspaper calls me at my work, I wouldn't answer it. I would pass it on to someone else. But, so that is standard practice. So maybe that's just what they're saying is, like, if the newspaper calls, like, pass it up to someone bigger than you so that, like, it can be coming from the head honcho and we have correct information. Like, that part I kind of do understand. But it does feel almost like there should be some level of comfort and some level of training that you should be expecting a certain level of question to be coming. Like questions about the product, how does it work? How, what is, you know, how often should I use it? How should I store it? Some of these things I feel like your rep should absolutely be able to handle and tell you more information about instead of being like, uh, it's fine, just do it. Or, you know, I don't know. And that's, that makes sense, but that's not quite how it's handled. And that's like, that's just something that raises a red flag. That's one more problem in the machine and the last thing that I really want to talk about with the company itself is more about how the product is manufactured so with something you're going to be injecting into your horse's body it should be sterile and to be a sterile product they have to undergo certain testing by the FDA and have to be approved that this is a sterile product sure you can take one thing and send it off to be seen if that is sterile but that does then compromise that one product and so you can't guarantee that each one is sterile and so it goes through rigorous testing and what they claim is that the product is manufactured in alabama and in colorado the product is made in iso 4 clean room under a laminar flow hood that makes the manufacturing space at iso 3 or better the bottles and caps and stoppers are gamma irradiated. The product itself is run through a 0.2 micron filter that filters out any bacteria, endotoxin, or fungus. The manufacturing facility undergoes spot inspections by the FDA required by all CGMP facilities. Sounds great. It's not true. Yeah, because their warehouse and manufacturing plant in Florida is hiring. Well, it's manufactured in Alabama and Colorado is the ones they're talking about. So maybe some are sterile, maybe some are not. Well, so maybe they have three of them. They have more than one. Okay, so maybe it's just not the Florida. The Florida one's not inspected. Gotcha. That makes sense. But what I'm bringing up is that I couldn't confirm this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not a part of the FDA, so I can't go and look through all their records and stuff. However, I've seen multiple people that are are part of it and I can't necessarily confirm it because I can't confirm their employment history but they were talking about when they looked into it themselves they didn't see a confirmation that this was accurate and I couldn't find a certificate that proves that they do have this level of sterilization with their product so while I'm not necessarily 
doubting them. I'm just doubting them until they can show me that it's true. If it exists, you would have a big shiny badge on your webpage that proved it. Like you would have all these claims on your website that proved it. And they don't. They And this is the thing with them is they have a history of making statements. Bold statements they present to you as other facts and they're not. It's not true. The sheer amount of testimonials and the sales reps that mention and share false information should sway you one way already. But on top of that, like it should be sterile. You should be able to prove to me that your product is sterile. And then show me your little certificate. Give me your badge. Like I want to see. I want that proof. The fact that that's not there and easily readily seen and findable is concerning. It's super concerning. And the other thing is the BBB, the Better Business Bureau, even though they're not like they haven't decided to join them. The BBB only knew about them for a few months, according to the webpage, before they flagged their testimonials and their advertisements as highly suspicious. Like, it only took a few months. And that this happened in 2020 for the BBB to be like, whoa, <laughs> something fishy is happening here and attempting to contact them. And of course, they never heard back from them, or at least that's what their website says. The company has refused to clarify and the thing is like the lack of information on their behalf is not for a lack of trying on any of us it's not for a lack of questions being asked it's simply no one is responding and giving that information out we cannot find it those that claim to have it won't share it which doesn't make sense and on top of this it raises a lot of red flags because a lot of people are asking you know well if it seems to help my animal what's the harm in it and as well as like there's some interesting ambassadors for this prog- product. There's some interesting top riders that use it. Marilyn Little being one of them. Unfortunately, Allison Springer is another one. And Leah Lang Lucic. Like, oh, I know. I saw Allison and I didn't see Leah's name, but I did see Allison's. Mm. Dang it. You know, and a lot of people operate under the idea that like if it's good enough for them and their horses and they're at the top, then why wouldn't it be good enough for me and my horses? And like, I understand that logic. Even though it might be showing good results, the fact that it's having such drastic, quick results over other products is a red flag. That should tell you something, as well as taking a crippled horse and making it sound again and rideable isn't necessarily true. I think there's going to be more damage happening to these horses in the long run, as well as we don't necessarily know what the long-term effects of it are. So while it might seem good and great, Right now, currently, it's, I mean, I guess if you don't really care, then it doesn't really matter. But at the same time, it matters for that horse's long-term comfort for being able to live out the rest of their life. So I just wanted to add to that because a lot of, I see it in a lot of the uh, forums and the conversations is that, well, oral supplements don't have any more testing or any more regulation. I agree. Like the, we we've got into this how we already think oral supplements are weird. Check out that apple episode. Like we know we're not promoting those either. I'm a little bit more comfortable feeding something that a lot of like to my horse that has been being fed for a long time than I am injecting something. But it's you're injecting it into your horse. You're injecting it straight into their blood. Like you're I would ah. rather eat broccoli than inject broccoli. Like, I think we can all accumulatively agree we'd rather eat broccoli than inject it. It's good for you. It is good for you, scientifically proven to be good for you, but uh, shouldn't inject it. Exactly. And I mean, I've also commonly seen the sentiment of why are you only calling out Summit when other brands out there seem to have similar practices and issues? And not all of them seem to be exactly the same as Summit, but we're not only calling out summit we're just starting here at one like you we have to start somewhere and i don't think it's harmful to start addressing companies or brands or specific supplements one at a time i think it allows for us to cover more information by addressing them and we don't gloss over too much by trying to lump them all together but they also are like the biggest offenders in the room like they are so many red flags from the product to the people to the business model where, yes, there's other not great products out there and other not great companies out there, but I don't feel like there's so many red flags and I'm not injecting other products. Again, I'm not injecting other products. It's just crazy to me. Yeah, it's crazy to me. And like, 
The other thing, your horses aren't pin cushions. Like you cannot be injecting your horse that some people are injecting every other week. Like you, your, your horses aren't pin cushions. You can't do that. That's actually like so bad for for them. But that's a whole nother topic. Whole nother topic. So I have no interest in trusting it or using it until there are at least some double blind studies out there with like peer reviewed that show that it's doing what it says and that are not necessarily being conducted at the hands of the owner of the company with like a vested financial interest, that's when I'll start considering it as a viable option. But until then, I'm going to stay far, far away. Well, just until like, I mean, compare their website to Back on Track. Like Back on Track is the first website that popped to mind. They are selling a product that sits on the outside of my horse's body and there is way more research and way more information about how it works on Back on Track's website and my horse doesn't eat it. (laughs) <laughs> like, if they can provide it, and I understand a lot of these companies, we do always, like, complain that they don't do enough research into their products while making claims. I feel like a lot of those companies, though, when it's not, they at least are pointing to research. They understand the basic research, even if it's not applicable in most cases. They do understand the basic concepts and do try to connect people with some stuff. Or the research is, you know, internal research for product development purposes that's not the case this the rumored research is not product development research that is supposed to be kept private this is the results research how does it work and if you're keeping the results that are supposed to be favorable private then why did you even do the research like if you're not going to share it with us then that was a waste of money and time yeah and you're injecting this This isn't a piece of tack that has a lack of research. This isn't a bit that has a lack of research. You're injecting this into your horse. (laughs) With literally like no protocols, no dosing protocols, just willy nilly, whatever your horse. Some people are saying, I just do what my horse tells me he needs. I could feel when he needs it. Not, not how any of this works. (laughs) Not, none of this works. Like you shouldn't be, if you have to keep giving it more and more and more, then it's not doing anything. And I know people's trusted vets out there are willing to support it and recommending it. I mean, the one person I saw commented that their vet was like, well, no one else seems to have having issues with it yet. But if you if they start to have issues, you'll probably have issues. So you'll probably be able to sue and get money back for it. That's not the logic I want to be operating under with my horse's welfare and like in the question. Right. As well as like. Yeah. Just because vets recommend it and are like it's your trusted vet. I mean, I don't want to say I don't want to say bad vets. I want to say like there are a ton of vets and professionals in the horse world that find themselves in a sticky situation where they know they have to either appease the client or lose the client. And oftentimes they will say, yeah, that's fine. Do what you want. Okay. And they will allow bad practices or practices that they that's true. don't don't know much about to continue. So I don't want to say bad vets. I just want to say like they maybe don't have as much research as they should or haven't had the opportunity to look into it, but they hear like, I just think I deal all the time with my vet is, well, this works for my client X. Why don't you try it? But that's not science. That's just like, well, her horse isn't dead yet. So like, why don't you try it too? And a lot of that is how vets like find things that work and make recommendations. Not everyone sits down and tries to find the science and that's not that's not the vet's fault any uh, other final thoughts not really thank you guys for listening to our whole episode i hope you liked it i hope you got something out of it maybe learned something about some joint performance that you didn't know beforehand because i learned a lot and got a lot more scared of it than i thought i needed to be um if you guys have questions comments concerns if anyone out there finds that cornell study the actual physical tangible cornell study send it to us. You can either reach out to us on Instagram at inthebarn.pod or you can send it to us via email at inthebarnpod at gmail.com as well as if you guys want, you can go and leave a review for us at the Apple podcast, wherever you leave reviews for podcasts. I don't know where. There's like a little purple icon. Leave a review. Yeah, those definitely help with uh, getting us found on the Apple podcast and helps us to climb the charts a little bit so other people can find us and listen to us too. So... Thanks for sticking around. Stay safe. Stay classy. Stay in the saddle. Don't inject your horse.